Hey everyone, I just wanted to, uh, you know, I'm really excited today to talk to talk about this topic. Um, the question comes up all the time with our clients, um, or just with people, you know, getting on here into the group. They they keep asking the question over and over: Is it too late if your spouse already wants a divorce? Sometimes there's a little bit of variation there, and they'll say, okay, is it too late if they're asking for a separation, or if they've already filed papers, or if we've already had a court hearing? Um, and, and I get that hesitation there, that little bit of fear, because, I mean, if, if they're wanting a divorce, they must be pretty final. They must be pretty certain. They must be absolutely sure that they don't want the, the marriage anymore. And, I um, just want to communicate that that's not necessarily the case here. See, when people are asking for a divorce, um, it usually means several things. Here. The, there's no longer any love there. That, that commitment has died off. That there isn't really any connection. And that you've lost um, some level of comfort with each other. Um, I can usually assume also that in some way, shape or form that it's very difficult in these relationships for people to, to t talk about and to discuss problems with their, their spouse. We can assume these things because if, if there was, if people were able to talk about problems, if they, if there was commitment, if there was comfort or connection or love, there would be no real, real reason to discuss divorce or to really even consider that as an option. And so even still, even still, um, here's the, there's the question. Well, okay, well, what if it does get to that point? What if we do, if they do want a divorce, is it too late? And I'll, I'll tell you what, what I look for in these situations, because I'm looking for very specific criteria. I'm looking for certain indicators, whether it is or is not too late. And in many cases, it, it isn't. Um, you know, I'm looking at a number of things. I'm looking at uh, a couple's level of communication, for instance. If there is no interaction whatsoever. It's very hard to build up a relationship without any interaction. I'm also looking at the quality of that communication. You know, are, are the, are people just really at this surface level of communication, only barely able to talk, barely able to be around each other? Is, you know, I'm looking at whether there's some active anger or active spite, active resentment, and, you know, whether the spouse pulling out is really coming down hard on the other person. But the, even if we have some of these things, that doesn't mean that it's still necessarily done. And here's, here's the reason why. People, like I said, people get divorced for a reason. Certain things are lost. There's certain, we can even assume also that there's some inherent amount of risk coming back into the relationship if even there was some sort of chance that it could work. In, in essence, there are, cer there are certain problems, certain concerns, certain risks that the person leaving the marriage um, needs addressed before they can come back in. So, for instance, if the problems have been about lying or about affairs or about any number of things, they have to feel that those problems won't be problems again in the future. If they're going to risk being hurt again, if they're going to risk opening themselves up and investing emotionally, then they need some guarantee that that vulnerability, that risk isn't going to be painful for them. And so I've seen, I've seen situations where people have already been to court, where they have the lawyers, where they have the divorce papers in hand, and we've been able to turn that around completely. I get, you know, 
updates on some of these couples, you know, every once in a while. And it's, it's just amazing to see it go from on the brink of divorce to these people that I've talked with um, sending me happy vacation photos and, um, or announcing, you know, announcing a new addition to the family or, or things like that. And it's not that uncommon. It, as long as you're able to, uh, you know, take the necessary steps and do what's needed to actually make things work. There are, however, certain situations where I do have a high amount of doubt whether something can work or not. Uh, for instance, you know, if communication is completely stopped, like your spouse won't answer any calls, they won't answer any text messages, they won't answer any letters or emails, there's no communication whatsoever. That's a situation that's going to be very, very difficult to do anything about. I mean, number one, you if you don't have any interaction, how do you build up a relationship? But number two, this tells me that there's a certain level of discomfort, even on those basic interactions, to, you know, there's that discomfort that is preventing these things from happening. But even still, even if that interaction is gone, there are some steps that we can take just to make sure that it's not all the way gone. Yeah, there are certain things that we can do to open up those conversations, to open up communication. At that point, though, if, um, like I said, if there, if that's still not working, then yes, I, I think that's a situation that can't be worked on. The other situation where I say, you know what, this is this is just not going to work, is when the um, spouse that's leaving the relationship is actually well committed to someone else, and I don't mean an affair. I don't mean a boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, I'm talking about real commitment. If they are having a child with someone else, if they are engaged to someone else, if they're buying property with someone else, they're showing a level of commitment that, you know, is really going to be difficult to, to break. And I'm not sure if it's even going to be healthy at that point. But barring those two, um, those two concerns, I think there's, Absolutely. There's so many cases out there that could be saved and people just give up just a little bit too soon, or they don't go the extra mile, or they they don't get the right kind of help. And here's here's where, you know, I, I feel like I get a little bit frustrated because I all the time I hear people coming to me and I ask them, okay, what are some of the things that you've tried before? And they'll They'll tell me, okay, well, I went to the, the pastor, or I went to this therapist, or I went to so-and-so, and it was just a terrible experience, and it didn't help at all, and so nothing's going to work. And that's just not the case. Um, you know, there, there's a, lot, a wide variety of ability and skill out there. There's a lot of different approaches, and... And it just, it pains me to see people give up too soon on a situation that is absolutely salvageable. So if you want like some definitive, okay, yes, this is going to work or no, this is, isn't, like I said, the no, it isn't is pretty clear. If there's very little interactions or no interactions at all, that's going to be a very difficult situation. Or if they're committed to someone else, that's just not going to work. Things that I would be looking for, whether we can say, yeah, there's a really a lot of wiggle room. There's a lot of flexibility here is whether your spouse has any doubt about the divorce, if they're questioning whether it's a good decision, if they're still having a lot of positive interaction with you, if they want to still be friends, you know, if they are wanting to do activities with you and the kids together still, if they're reaching out to you in some ways, you know, those are really good signs. But even barring that, there's still a lot to do. And we just, we want to help you. Now, I, I get it. There, it can be very frustrating, and it can be very hard um, trying all sorts of different things and not seeing some success. And I, I, I completely understand that there's going to be some doubt whether another solution is going to work, and that's why you know I, you know I am where I am. I, and why I offer to to 
have a trial session with people to to evaluate whether this is a situation that can be saved and to show them that I actually have, I, we have a plan here. In many, many cases, we have a, a very specific plan that we can, um, we can use to, to help you guys. Like I said, we've taken situations where, you know, a couple's hardly talking, they have divorce papers in hand and we were able to turn that around. So if you have any inkling that you really want, if you really want this to work, and you're willing to do whatever it takes, we would love to talk with you. Um, even if you just wanna dabble in it and try it out a little bit, we have an option for that as well. If you, you know, you can head to our website, um, we have options there either to contact us or to buy our, our course online and we, your, your situation very, very likely can work. I have some people, I just wanna address a couple of questions here. Todd is asking if this is going to be posted later. Yes, this is going to be on our on our uh, group page here, so you can watch this later. But yes, we can we can absolutely help you. We'd love for you to try out the services. We'd like we'll love for you to see what we have to offer. Now, if you have any questions uh, about this, I would love to address that here. If you have any doubts here, any concerns. Um, Carlos Ramirez is saying, I would love to save it, but we cannot force someone to change. And you're absolutely right. You can't force people to change. And I'll even tell the, the clients that I have, you know, I'll, I'll tell them that you could do everything 100% correctly and still there's going to be a certain factor that, you know, the other spouse has to choose to, to be in the marriage. But there are things that we can do to really stack things in your favor. No, we can't force the other person to, to change. Um, but if they're leaving the marriage, if there's, it's for a reason. And if we can address those reasons um, and we can give them some certainty that those things won't be a problem in the future, then you have a very high chance that the person will begin to engage again and begin to consider the marriage again. Hey everyone, I, I see a lot of people saying hi, uh, Jason and Debbie, Todd, everyone. Um, okay, Carlos asked, okay, but she said it's too late. That's a, that's, a, that's a good concern, it's a good question to have. So even if they're saying too late, am I saying that it can still work? And yeah, I, I see that all the time. Now this is what someone says, you know, when they say it's too late, essentially they're saying, okay, we've tried everything. We tried this and this and this, and nothing's working. Or I've just lost these feelings now and then I just can't get them back. But if we boil it down, down to that basic level, there are still some concerns there. If they're saying it's too late, there's reasons why they're saying it's too late. It could be, like I said, it could be that they're saying they've tried a lot of solutions that just haven't been working. And so, and the, then in their mind, there, there are no solutions. But that's, that's not gonna, that's not 100% true. There's things that we can do. If it's too late, they could say, I've been hurt too much. And that could be a factor. And it'd be really difficult to um, get re return from that hurt. But even there, there's things that we can do. You know, if someone is really concerned about that pain right there, that hurt, if what they're really saying is I'm worried about being hurt again. I'm worried about there being continued pain in the future. And if you can address those things, we can, we can make progress. We can move forward. Um, Tracy's saying, I've tried to tell my husband that I'll change, but he won't give me a chance. And so I, we're hitting some walls there. Either, in that case, you know, not giving them a chance, it's either there's the wall of like, we're not able to communicate or we are able to communicate and he doesn't believe me. And even still, there's things to do there. If it's about communication, we can do things to open up communication. So if he doesn't believe that change will last, demonstrating that things can be different and setting expectations, even if they're not accepting those things and being consistent about it, can open up those doors. What I'm saying is, each of these concerns that the spouse leaving the, you know, when a spouse is leaving the marriage, 
it's going to be for these some very specific concerns. And each of these concerns actually has a, a solution. Every one of these, whether it's worry about um, worry about the pain that's in the past, or worrying about whether things will be different in the future, or whether they're saying it's too late. These are things that this is what we deal with, you know, in our organization every day, and we see solutions every day. This is, yeah, um, I and this is exactly why I, I get that there's doubts. And I get that there's fears going into this. And that's why I tell people, get us on the phone. We'd love to set up an appointment with you. And we'd love to come up with a plan um, if you're serious about change. Because I will admit, I mean, you could have free sessions and you could have, you know, bounce around to different people getting free sessions, but it's not going to do any good unless you really commit and you really follow through and you really show some consistency. Yeah, so for those of you who really want some change, I, I want to talk to you because we, ha we, we have a solution. Uh, Carlos is saying she's moved on and now dating and we're not even divorced just yet. And I find that very disrespectful and I, I get that. You know, I, <clears throat> I've dealt, you know, I've worked with clients in a very similar situation where their spouse is moving on they're starting to date even though, though the divorce isn't final and you know i haven't gone through that myself but i can only imagine how hurtful that is to see this person that you love moving on but even still even if they're just even if they're dating someone that level of commitment isn't there and between you know especially when other things are involved especially when there's um things like you've been together a long time or there's children involved or there's um, religious beliefs involved. If you can present a better option, if you can actually give this person what they're looking for, you present, you become the, the much better option. Divorce is messy and it's hurtful and it's yucky and it causes all these problems. And people looking for divorce, they're looking for something. It's not just to escape away from you. They're looking for something in their life. They're looking for to feel connected to someone or they're looking to feel respected, to feel like someone is listening to them. And if you can provide those things with some certainty and they, this person knows that it's gonna continue that way, then we have, we, then they start to consider the marriage again. Uh, Tracy's saying my husband has been having an affair uh, um, years. It's an affair because we are still married. It's filed for divorce, but we're still married in God's eyes in the law. And it's very similar, very similar comment there, right there. Yes. Uh, until they are actually 100% committed to this other person, as in they're getting married, they're having a child, they're buying property. They, they have something binding them together. It's not too late. Um, now I will admit that with years in the process, you know, years of, of separation, I would, that's a situation that I would want to look at more closely before I can say yes, definitely, or no, definitely. Um, but even still, even after years, you know, as long as some of the right factors are in place, that's something that could be fixed. But I, I'm, I'm getting it, like the, um, okay, so Jason is asking um, about some financial stuff. So yes, we on our on our webpage there we have a one-on-one -on -one support option, um, costing you know a certain amount of money there. Uh, what I what I usually do um, that that covers a few months worth of worth of one-on-one -on -one support, um, and what that means is I would talk directly with these people at least once a week. I'd also run group sessions throughout the week. Um, that I invite people to attend to. Um, and during those group sessions, I like to hit every person that attends as much, you know, as much as I'm able to um, spend at least 10, 15, 20 minutes with that person and solve a, a problem. Um, beyond that, um, if people haven't already bought our online course, we include that in the package. And these are a lot of really helpful tools to, you know, stop arguments, create connection, break down these barriers. And then even beyond that, I try to give 
my clients as much support as needed. So if there are, if there is some sort of crisis, if there is some something that needs to be worked on in between all this, I like to make myself available. So I'm glad for all the the interaction right here. Um, and I will, like I said, I would love to address any other questions, any other concerns. People can message me directly um, through Facebook. I, I welcome people to send a friend request or send a message request and ask me some questions um, because I realize there's this is a difficult situation and you know, it's it's good to have a little bit of a reassurance that hey there is a plan here and someone knows what they're talking about and it's good to check in, in on that so please message me uh, or Heather let us know what your some of your concerns are um, go to our website highthrivecoaching.com check out our program and uh, we'd love to help you out here all right Thanks for watching, everyone.